There's no question right now that the numbers are up, that COVID is on the rise. In fact, in our community, we have been uh, updated to where our community is red, and that stands for a very high risk. Yes. Uh, yes, day before yesterday in America, the, the, the numbers are always a day behind. There were 193,000 new cases, and currently Alabama is ranked 18 out of 50 states in coronavirus cases. Every day, as pastors of Heritage, we are getting phone calls from different people, multiple people who either have the virus or are in quarantine from the virus, to include several of our own staff members. Um, the next thing you need to know is that our leaders are continually on top of this, and we're continually talking to our leaders. They're watching the numbers. They're watching every week, and they're trying to make wise decisions. Um, our metric from the beginning would be 14 days without an increase. Clearly, we are not meeting that right now. Remember, we're called to do no harm, to do good, and to stay in love with God. Those are our general rules for the church, and we continue to try to do so in the midst of this pandemic. We're in a very unique yeah. situation at Heritage. Unfortunately, our building is small. Our sanctuary, we can't even get people the recommended feet away from singing. Our kids' area, it's very difficult to kids apart. Even our hallways are small. Many churches have, have tried to open, and many people who attend the churches comment and lament that church is kind of a substandard experience. And that's happening everywhere. In fact, if you uh, look at church stats, what we're discovering is as churches reopen, they're only seeing about 36%. Um, we found that even to be true during Lawn Chair Church. So not everyone right. feels comfortable returning to church in the midst of a pandemic. And number four, it's, it's our number one concern has and always will be your safety. You've heard us say we won't meet again, in person, in close quarters like this inside the building until it's safe. You matter to us, and we can never forgive ourselves if someone died under our care, under the care of this church. And you know what? People make choices, and things happen. A lot of folks have been infected with this. And it might not be our fault, but it is our responsibility to maintain safety here at the church. You know, there's this passage in 2 Timothy where it's very, very clear that God has not given us a spirit of fear. And we want you to know that we are not operating out of a spirit of fear. In that scripture, we're told we're to operate out of power and out of love and out of a sound mind. Mm -hmm. And we continue to operate out of power knowing that God is not confined to a building. Nope. You, the, this building is not the church. You are the church. So the church is still active and loving and living in the world around us. God is at work. And then we have to operate out of love. You know, we know that God loves us. And we all can be secure in that. But we also have to remember that God has called us to love others. And keeping people safe is an act of love. Yes. And then we're called to have a sound mind. We're called to discern things together. That's why we listen to our leadership team. It's why we listen to the larger United Methodist Church. It's why we listen to what science is telling us. It's why we listen to community leaders. And in listening to, this, to these voices... It helps us make these sound decisions that are written about in the book of 2 Timothy. We do so for the greatest good. And honestly, based on current increases, it's quite possible that we could experience another season where we only do worship online. So here's the thing. If you have any questions or concerns at any time about where we're going, we know this has been a long haul. I mean, like I said, 35, 36 weeks now. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions or concerns, please call us. Stay in contact. We have tried to contact you many times, and we've gotten to talk to a lot of you on a very personal level, and we appreciate that. But here's what we need from you. You call us, but at the same time, we're calling on you right now. We need you to pray for our leadership, pray for the people of heritage, and pray for us. I mean, we get it. It's easy to be discouraged, to be disappointed, to be disillusioned. And we know, the leadership of this church and us, we know we cannot please everyone. But we respectfully ask you to trust us, to know we are doing our best in a very difficult situation. And that we do so not in a spirit of fear, but in a spirit of love and care for all of you. In fact, let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for all of those that you've inspired to bring up with wisdom how we can handle this in a way that's, that's the most loving for everybody, that takes the most care and responsibility for our neighbors. Father, our church is doing the best it can in a hard situation, 
but we know that this church is not this building. It is simply a tool you have given us, that we embody the church. And Lord, we represent that church everywhere we go, every day. So Father, make us all wise as your church to represent Christ out in the world in a way that shows the most love <laughs> and the soundest mind and your power to everyone around us. We ask this in Jesus' name.